so very good afternoon everyone uh, i hope you have attended the novel session and exciting keynotes which we have we have conducted uh, early morning and this afternoon so i i welcome you all for this panel discussion that we are having right now uh, and the topic for the panel discussion that we are having is the imperative of moving code to the cloud uh, security and privacy ramifications as you know that you know uh, uh, after pandemic the things have changed and most of the businesses are now embarking on the cloud they are thinking about uh, migrating to the cloud whether it is a public private or a virtual private cloud so while we are moving our cores or maybe our core applications or workload on the cloud the security and privacy are key considerations uh, and while we are migrating or we are thinking to migrate to the cloud we need to really think about the security and privacy preparedness and to discuss the same uh, we have conceptualized this panel discussion as part of uh, this financial conclave 2022 uh, so to discuss this particular topic uh, i have a very eminent panelists with me uh, i would like to call them one by one on the stage so uh, first panelist i have from the uh, icici bank mr ganesh who is a chief information security officer um, from the icici bank i would like to welcome ganesh sir so uh, secondly i have mr sabrinathan who is a chief strategy officer uh, with uh, uh, with with wire uh, 9 um, i would like to welcome mr sabrinathan thank you thank you mr so vivek thank you and thank to you. and to put a perspective from the uh, from the technology provider point of view i have uh, mr terence booms who is the country head uh, security for microsoft india uh, welcome terence hi welcome so very thank you yeah and to moderate this session i have uh, mr kalpesh doshi who is a chief information security officer for fis india uh, welcome kalpesh so uh, without uh, any further delay i would like to hand over to kalpesh who going to moderate this session uh, and i would request kalpesh to set the tone of the session and please uh, take this discussion forward looking forward for the great discussions uh, thank you vivek a warm welcome everyone uh, we have i would say you know a kind of uh, best brains in the industry today representing various diverse industry or you know the sectors and i'm very sure you know we would have a very interesting discussion today on the topic which is about uh, moving the core to the cloud and what are the security and privacy concerns around that cloud has been a, a kind of an essential i would say you know a, a talking point for a lot of us uh, especially after the onset of pandemic because what pandemic did is it created a new world we can always go back and say that there was pre covid world and there's a post covid world the world has changed because a lot of organizations have really change the way they operate we have seen there is a push for a digital there is a push to the cloud because we have realized that people are the new boundaries they are the new perimeter which essentially means that if you still rely on the old i would say centralized solutions right uh, of hosting that in your own data center you're going to find it more and more ineffective you're going to find it more and more challenging to kind of work with that or enable your workforces on the same so we are really seeing there is a huge changes which are really happening when we talk about financial industry per se right uh, we are also seeing that there has been a beautiful intersection of technology and finance right and we see that's created a lot of disruptors right uh, often challenging a lot of your uh, traditional players uh, we are seeing you know that uh, be your online banking be you know uh, probably we're seeing that you know your use of atms will be redundant in some time right because we're seeing a kind of online transactions we hear this from government the volume of you know online transactions which are happening day in day out so we have really seen the impact of what digi digitalization can really do and that's going to force every player to adopt cloud sooner or later right so i think that's very important if i to really throw some facts because there are a lot of people who say all oh, this is story as long as you don't throw some numbers you know it doesn't make sense right it doesn't ring bells to them so for those of you who love numbers right i'm quoting gartner 
right? According to them, uh, you know, the services, the cloud services is forecasted to grow by 20.4% in uh, 2022. And it will total to a revenue of $494.7 billion. And that's expected to go to $600 billion in 2023. That goes on to prove a significant investment that will continue to happen in cloud. Similarly, there was a, a survey by EU organizations where 72% of the respondents have come back and they have said that they intend their prime strategy is to move to cloud, right? And the top priority will continue to move to the cloud. So we know that when you talk about cloud today, it is not an option because every CIO today, if they believe moving to cloud is an option, I think uh, that's going to cost them because that is not an option. That's an enabler and that's going to differentiate your business from others, right? So there are a lot of such interesting facts. Uh, we'll share that as we move ahead. But yes, uh, the stage is for, you know, uh, having our speakers to talk about it. So let me get really started with, you know, uh, my kind of a first set of question. And maybe Terence for you, right? Uh, just continuing with what we spoke about it, you've seen that the last few years, there is an explosion of cloud, uh, cloud technologies. COVID seems to have just accelerated the moment, right? Uh, what are your views and experience on cloud migration, right? Especially from say security and privacy standpoint when you talk about core applications. So over to you, Terence. Sure, sure, Kalpesh. Now, thank you for setting the stage uh, and, and hosting us. Really excited to interact with you and our audience today. Uh, and uh, you know, to answer your question, uh, one, definitely, I think cloud transformation, cloud migration uh, has been something that we speak about. But I think if you take a step back, uh, what's driving this transformation is actually true business transformation. Uh, businesses are realizing the value uh, that cloud can provide to accelerate their time to market, whether it is customer experience, employee experience, operational efficiency, uh, or, or overall uh, you know, business value that they can create for their customers. There is tremendous potential there. And when you look at the surrounding ecosystems, uh, application uh, providers, uh, some the, the third party providers that partner with the financial sector to provide the whole ecosystem, the value added services. And in, in, you know, in your case, Kalpesh, FIS also, who's a, who's a very large partner and ecosystem provider uh, to, to the banking fraternity. Uh, you know, a lot of the new innovation and development, uh, you know, is possible because uh, it's being built on on new age technologies and cloud is really enabling that. And the platform in terms of scale, elasticity, uh, in the, the new age engines, AI, ML, a lot of that really enables us to provide this. So net net, I think the uh, pandemic or not, of course, pandemic has accelerated the transformation, but I think businesses and technology leaders uh, you know, both agree on at least on these points saying that, you know, we need to really innovate and this is where there's a lot of innovation happening. So I think that that has been the, the journey so far. From a security standpoint, uh, in my own experience, what I have seen, and I think one thing that uh, our technology leaders really uh, stood up and, and to the time, uh, you know, uh, went much required was making sure that uh, technology enables business and makes it an available when needed. So if you look at our three triads of security, it's basically confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And because our uh, technology leaders were able to make sure that the platforms they've built on are secure or resilient, they were able to sustain continuity and, and make work available even when pandemic happened. So I think from a security standpoint, that definitely was a big, big enabler to enable businesses to continue and do more, uh, you know, even, even if it was working remote and, and working hybrid scenarios. So I think availability definitely uh, was, was definitely addressed. What are the things that we otherwise see? Things that, of course, um, as organizations moved and evolved, there were other things that had to, uh, you know, kept, be kept in mind. And, and when pandemic happened, of course, there was a lot of pressure on continuing business, but things like threat management, visibility, <laughs> governance, compliance, like making sure we comply with the various you know, requirements out there, uh, sometimes was not as, you know, as you can see on a score of 10 out of 10, because we had to make sure everything got together. So I think while the journey has definitely 
uh, sped up and, and there's a lot of potential out, out there. We are seeing organizations uh, you know, making sure that they take those steps to create, make their environment secure, make their envi environments compliant and build that in the overall story. So broadly, that's what has been the, uh, I would say my observation and views as organizations uh, are evolving and adopting uh, and, and transforming to make their business more agile and more scalable. That's very good. Uh, and I completely agree. Uh, innovation has always been the driving force for every change you know, that we've seen. I completely concur on that. What I'll also do is, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Ganesh, uh, who's a general, you know, a general manager from ICIC, unfortunately had issues with his connectivity, but we are very happy to welcome you, sir. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll just pose the question again to you, sir. Uh, it was more about, you know, that uh, we're seeing that there's an explosion of cloud technologies, you know, and yeah, there is always a belief that COVID must have accelerated that. Now, I always think it's more of uh, people who have learned swimming, right? Uh, and they all know the fact that typically you start uh, in the shallow water, you practice all your steps, you, know, you practice all your drops, and you believe you're going to be doing good. And then, you know, finally, there's a day when you have been pushed into the deep pool, right? And that's where you actually learn swimming, because that you know it's a it's a fight for survival. And Terence, you rightly said, it's not that the ecosystem was all ready, but then people have learned it on the fly. People learned how to adapt. People learned how to fine tune their strategy, and they made sure because it was all about continuity. It was all about survivability. So, Mr. Ganesh, you know your views, right, on experience of cloud migration, especially from security and privacy standpoint. Um, and we'd be very happy to hear your thoughts and views on the scene. Hey, thanks. And uh, sorry for uh, some of those connectivity issues that I had. Uh, see, if you ask me, I would say as far as cloud migration is concerned, in spite of whatever has happened during the pandemic, I would say that in terms of genuinely shifting large amount of workloads or something which is critical, I would say we are still early days and a lot of this journey will start with probably where we are much more comfortable or where we, where it is uh, more on the basis of ready-made platforms uh, like Core 365, etc. I think in most in the case of most uh, organizations of our kind, I think the journey will start, uh, I mean, rightfully so at the periphery and then we'll kind of uh, come closer and closer to the core and that is the stage at which we are in. And obviously, there will be a lot of learning that will happen as you do this. And obviously, when you are also learning, like you said, you don't want to experiment. Uh, you are learning uh, in a deep pool or in the open waters. Uh, you will want, you will always want to kind of uh, start your experimentation where it is more comfortable and where you can kind of you can afford to go a little bit wrong. But even though I strongly believe that in the cloud, you are. <clears throat> Your leeway to get things wrong is very, very minimal because uh, I always tell my teams that uh, you assume that you are already outside of, outside of your house. You have to fend for yourself. And there is nothing called, for example, I used to tell people that there is nothing called UAT in the cloud because everything is in the open. So, but that being the case, a uh, lot of this is, if you ask me, getting played out. And some of the variables that will come into the picture as we do this journey will be the readiness of the organizations like ours in terms of our skills, in terms of our ability, the readiness of some of the partners, because uh, in a lot of cases, we are talking about uh, products that we already use and how ready those products will be to be actually used on the cloud. And the other aspect of uh, what uh, you always hear from people is, uh, are you putting out the right architecture on the cloud or are you just doing this kind of shit? Because you know, in a lot of cases, if you just lift and shift uh, legacy code or legacy application, obviously both your benefits will be minimal and your scope for, let's say, having <coughs> some of these security and vulnerability issues are also very high. So I think it is always better to actually take a step back, examine the state of your applications, their readiness, both from a scalability as well as from a security point of view, and then kind of do a calibrated movement as opposed to simply saying that everybody is going on to the cloud, let all the people on the cloud, the cloud are in it. And a lot of this is just a little bit of a myth because it's that way. 
there is a lot of agility but uh, i am a strong believer that uh, if you have to be truly agile you have to be even disciplined than otherwise so there is a lot of discipline that goes with it for you to get the benefits of that agility which is mean people cannot confuse let's say being adopt to be a child so they have to be careful so just because both staff start with a and both have five letters yeah the two are very very different that is a very great input right uh, i completely agree here that uh, a lot of this uh, depends on you know uh, i would say if you're having a core application right the oem do they have cloud ready applications do they have cloud ready architecture right that's extremely important and i completely concur here that uh, we live in a world right where uh, it's not good to say that you know i was able to save my organization 99 times right even that one time could have been catastrophic and it will have uh, you know probably great implications for the organization so i know it's not a fair game uh, and every ceo struggles right that's often a reason you know ceos are seen as being very cautious people but yeah i understand the ground realities are very different so thanks mr ganesh i think those are very interesting insights right uh sabri you know coming to you right uh, you come as a tech partner right you come as somebody who works closely with organizations helping them in their journeys right so there are so many buzzwords right around cloud you know there are so many myths and misconceptions right around cloud migration cloud security so as a tech organization right what are your views and suggestions on how an enterprise should embark you know on the cloud journey right do you think you know you should be learning much and much more on the shallow waters do you think plunging into the deep pool is the way you go ahead in the journey or there is a different approach that you recommend for organizations you know when they intend to go, go ahead with the cloud migration sure thank you thank you kapil uh, for 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 the opportunity uh, i think uh, it all spoils down to fundamentally what is the business need why you want to go for it because as as mr terence also mentioned earlier that you know what would it help the organization to do to help them to let's say increase their revenue reduce their costs and be a lot more agile and scalable etc so if it helps that i think that has to be the fundamental driver understanding the business need for it and then with respect to the nuances of actually embarking on this journey as such you know a holistic approach is always essential because uh, you know it helps to have have that road map charted out uh, sometimes uh, you know it may look very daunting at the beginning to do all of that in one go so having sort of a cloud migration architect plan this entire thing end to end is is primarily very essential and then the other nuances around do you want to do a sort of a very shallow as you said you know lift and shift migration where you hardly do any changes to the applications which are which are there you know do it at a very high level take them assets and put them on the cloud and make them work or you do a very deeper cloud integration you know looking at leveraging the capabilities of what cloud offers to be able to re architect the application itself right so do you go that way or do a simple lift and shift migration then looking at whether you know there are different types of clouds as most of you would know which is public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud deciding which of the options to choose is very key is, is very fundamental because there may be objections so the key stakeholders to say i don't want my key critical data to be in cloud right so in those kind of scenarios there are options always available whereby you can do a mix of both which is the hybrid option etc and also you know we want to just have a vendor lock in with just one cloud for vendor or do you want to look at a multi cloud so that you have options to choose between them you know because you know there are certain cloud providers who specialize who have much bigger and uh, a capability which they have established on certain areas maybe go uh, choose we can choose them for that maybe for others we can choose somebody else as well right? and also the other important thing is define your kpis pre migration post migration so that you can understand and substantiate the business case what you are presenting originally for buying in right because it's essential to have that baseline defined to say my my revenue growth is this much my page loading speed is this much my infra performance is this much right now and then maybe after the migration measure it to understand whether you're really getting the benefit of it as well right? 
And also uh, prioritizing migration components is very essential because more often, uh, you know, thinking about a big bang all in one go approach in terms of migrating could prove disastrous. So planning it well ahead of time and also compartmentalizing it into chunks will help the transition much more easier. And uh, last but not the least, I would say probably two things. One is uh, uh, training and scaling, upskilling the manpower, right? People who are currently supporting existing systems, infrastructure applications, they should be upskilled to be able to make the support easier done in the new world as well than in the post cloud migrated world. And also, uh, you know, more often it is advisable to have a trusted cloud migration partner to help you along the journey because uh, more often uh, it may sound easy, but then there is the detail, as they say, when they start getting the hands dirty, then they may find surprises. So having someone certified, someone uh, you know, who has done this before time and time and again would certainly help ease the process as well. I think that is absolutely great. And uh, Sabri, I like your point on KPIs, right? Because yes, what you can't measure, you'd never know, you know are you good, are you bad, right? So that's going to be very critical. I completely agree. Uh, cloud is specialized skill. And, you know, you definitely need the best people to run your show. So that is absolutely there. Credence, you know, maybe if I had to throw the same question to you, right? Uh, uh, again, Microsoft, you know, uh, has been a pioneer, <clears throat> right? When it comes to cloud, right? We all know, and we heard Mr. Kanish also say that, you know, it's kind of secular trend, right? If you have O365, we know it's going to be on Azure. So, you know, what would be your advice or how would you advise organizations to move the larger chunk, right? Or larger workloads to cloud? Yeah, my first thing would be skilling, uh, Kalvesh, because what we have seen, especially when uh, when organizations are looking to embark on their journey to cloud, while the business benefit and the business imperative of, you know, why am I doing this is sorted and you have that clarified, uh, the team that the core team that is working to do that uh, needs to be enabled, not just on the IT side of the house, but also how do you bring security from day one into the conversation. How do we make sure compliance requirements for that business, that process are built in? Uh, because the, so it's a combination of, I would say, thinking, skilling from the beginning, making sure the people have the right skills, the ability uh, because they, and, and the experience, because then they can think that way and avoid costlier mistakes uh, you know, later on, because it's, it's, an, it's a different way of computing right uh, slightly different than the traditional on-prem the there is a lot of similarity but this there's definitely differences as well uh, and then when you know when we look at uh, learnings right if you're looking if you and make sure that security is built in privacy is in a part of the design compliance controls are embedded and and the design from day one is having all of these parameters to start with it really makes your experience uh, you know, and and the ROI that you're striving for uh, come much earlier uh, in the process and, and does not delay your time to value or your, you know, return of investment uh, that you may foresee. And for any application, not just uh, Office 365 as a simple application, but any complex business application, process application that you are transforming and innovating. So I would say three imperatives while uh, organizations are looking to modernize, uh, make sure that there are the right people with the right skills and invest in scaling and make sure security and compliance are thought from day one as part of the design and you built it in, in your, you know, in your core framework and not later trying to do it and go to the security team later and say, okay, now please approve my project. I think then it, it will just create a lot of delay and friction. Yeah. So my advice would always be work with the security team, bring them in from day one and get the right skills in place uh, to get the project uh, to a good start. I think that's a very interesting perspective, right? Uh, compliance, yeah, it's uh, see FinSec or every financial institutions are highly regulated, right? And I've seen a shift now. See, earlier the focus was about safeguarding the data of the customers or citizens, right? Now I also seen that there is a subtle shift, but there is a avid evidence shift that it's now getting into national security because you're seeing that a lot of state actors, right? Uh, there are a lot of new regulations. 
there are regions you know which want to safeguard the data within their boundaries and from that perspective if compliance has been overlooked right it can have serious consequences because eventually if you're not compliant with the law of the law in the land or if your regulator sees xyz and you're not doing that right uh, there is no way you can function as an organization so that cannot be an afterthought you have to really put that at as your top priority and then plan a journey forward right and there are there are quite a few requirements right localization is one such requirement you can you have to have that in your boundaries when can data move out of your boundaries when is it to come back back to what has to be told locally so those things are very very interesting right so thanks again sabhi and you know terence for share, sharing that perspective right and yes skills will always continue to be a dominant you know a factor because it's like you know you have a airplane you have you you have a airport you have all the infrastructure but if you don't have a pilot all of that is you know is of no use because you need end of the day a pilot who's going to fly the plane if there are storms you know whatever be the circumstances be able to manage the plane so i think that's where the skills get into play i think just moving on very quickly and maybe a question to all of you right in whichever order right i have been picking up people but this time i want to make it democratic so anybody who want to go first but quickly uh, you know your thoughts in terms of what are the challenges what are the impediments right in terms of a cloud journey with your experiences it's more about you know when you are traveling by the road right you see danger signs be aware you know there is a turn there is a, a, a excellent zone something of that advice from you with your experience so everybody who is planning a cloud journey from a security standpoint or a privacy standpoint uh, we have spoken about it uh, quite a bit but if you had to you know identify a couple of them right what would be your pick on them as i said i'll be very democratic so i'll not choose a order uh, anybody can go you know the way you wish to go so i'll just keep it open to all maybe i'll give it a shot uh, you know the things which uh, which readily come to my mind for example is uh, is executive buy in you know that is very essential if we don't have that it's always a challenge because a it guy may keep on pushing to say this is the benefit this is the benefit but unless the business sees uh, a value in terms of investment uh, turning into some dollars there's always that challenge that is one big challenge the second aspect is the people's mindset as well you know, in terms of their knowledge and awareness of cloud the benefit it offers uh, and, and sometimes the challenges it poses which is probably prominently highlighted much more than the benefits so that uh, could could be could be one of those big big challenges then data sovereignty we talked about with pretty much every country every uh, location starting to build up their own uh, in a frame their own uh, data privacy policy and sovereignty policies as such uh, it is becoming a big challenge for global organizations to ensure data is in the right location so that they are compliant with the local laws and regulations um, and uh, the application readiness also because more often uh, the application may have been a legacy application which have been running for quite some time it may not necessarily be cloud ready as well so in those kind of sense instances it's it's a, probably a very long journey for some of them as well right so those are some of the challenges which i see are predominantly you know coming to the fore all the time very interesting sabri uh, who goes next uh mr ganesh you are on mute I guess Mr. Ganesh is having some audio challenges. Uh, Tell us uh, if you know by the time he fixes that, would he want to take it on? Sure, sure. Uh, I can pick that up. Uh, I'm just waiting to see if uh, Mr. Ganesh is able to come in, and then I'll definitely follow. Uh, Mr. Ganesh, no, sir. sir, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, sir. maybe somebody you know from the tech support can just help mr ganesh you know to get his audio back uh, so we'll have somebody to from the tech support to help you on that uh, so darren you know you maybe you know, wish to go last <laughs> yeah you should go last because mr ganesh has dropped any anyway, space 
sure i'll go so uh, i would say my advice uh, uh, or you would say the challenges that uh, or the you know the watch out right what should you be cautious about i uh, if you look at uh, organizations who have actually struggled with security on the cloud the number one you know and and you can pick up any report any analyst report or report for us report whatever you say like the number one reason for clients to actually have a security incident uh is not an external issue it's actually more to do with uh, config management uh right and that's where my previous you know point on skilling and in making sure the right you know skilling uh, enablement is done so that you can do the right things from day one so config management is something uh, you know as a as a strong advice saying good config management good posture management uh, you know security by design should be built upon that is one call out right one set the second thing that i would definitely recommend our security teams and it teams to do is making sure you have visibility and governance built in from day one uh, cloud uh, you know is, is so agile uh, and not just cloud today we are in a, today we are in a, you know a, a digital explosion era Uh, so the attack surface is so so huge, and you if you do not have visibility about what your assets are out there, irrespective of whether it's cloud or on-prem, uh, those assets can typically become your vulnerability points and and uh, attack points. So, uh, you know, config management is one call out. Second is visibility uh, and control, and third is governance. Right? How do, like just like in the on-prem world, we have security by design. Uh, whether it is desktops or servers, they are not allowed on the network unless they are. they are having a you know a gold standard or a gold image you know, or a secure uh, operating system similarly on the cloud when you are rolling up new services how do you make sure you have those guardrails uh, right vms come up without uh, you know making sure that vms have default security by design containers are coming in they have default security they are in a micro segmentation your public uh, you know your public endpoints or your public ips or vms are not just exposed uh, directly and and actually you might find it surprising but we've seen a lot of you know, security uh, situations where we've seen rules which allow everything in and out you know inbound allowed outbound allowed for public facing vms and no security and that's not intention it's just maybe you know it got missed out by in in the design flaw and then later on it was found by audit so so as you you know to answer your question saying what are the challenges or what are the watch outs go you know kind of cautions i would say right um, visibility governance and config management if if you have these three things in you know in place you definitely would have a much secure and compliant cloud environment i think that's wonderful i completely agree here i was looking at a report and terence bang on target it had put cloud uh, the, you know misconfiguration of config management as a top challenges on cloud migration and you rightly said that's how majority of the issues start creeping in it was followed by unauthorized access again the same thing you can't allow any any right you have to really do the segmentation you have to be careful about it so i think really great insights uh ganesh sir you know uh, we're very happy to have you back sir uh, the, your thoughts in terms of challenges or impediments sir no i think sabri and uh, terence covered quite a bit and uh, there's one aspect which probably i would like to cover from the point of view of the security practitioners who are looking at some of these cloud migrations i think one one thing which we have seen as some very important is understanding how the data is flowing end to end before you architect uh, any particular uh, cl- cloud architecture because if you ask me most of the problems come when you don't know exactly where the data is moving from and this is and when i say that i am including everything that is both data in motion and the under trust and where and today in a lot of uh, very large implementations it is not just about architecting something for one cloud it is about architecting the entire data flow because in a particular transaction flow you will have data moving across uh, one data center to another data center to another cloud to some other completely different cloud and then coming back and if as a security practitioner if you don't have a visibility of how this movement is happening and then you put controls on there are going to be humongous amount of areas or humongous amount of blind spots that you will have uh, which will come and kind of bite you later on i think quite a lot of other points in terms of things like uh, basic uh, inventory visibility 
configurations etc i think both currents and subary covered quite a bit and also another thing is if you do the data flow properly then also help you to understand what are the services that you are using from the cloud and where those services are located because you have to understand your regulation and we have always seen terrence knows this very well we have always seen that while the cloud data center may actually be in india and you may be okay and you think that you are what you call following the lay of the land but there are certain services which you may be using which may not be offered at that point in time out of india they may say that there is a road map of next year there is a road map of six months down the line so if as a practitioner you are not aware of all of these things then you could end up willy nilly in a situation where there is a service which is consuming my data but that service is not located in india and data is even momentary data is actually moving out and coming back so these are things that the people will have to be wary of and have complete visibility on not only data flow but also on services that you use because at the end of the day cloud is nothing but a bunch of uh, huge menu bar of services that are offered so you have to be both aware of your data as well as the services that you consume yeah that's that absolutely me i think uh, those are absolutely great insights right and completely agree you know uh, knowing where your data is right i think that is fundamental to be able to secure because what you don't know you can never protect right so i uh, absolutely completely agree on that right i think we touched up on regulatory you know and mr ganesh you know you rightly said that uh, compliance with regulator is always going to be a you know a paramount importance for every organization right and uh, it's also binding right so uh you know what are you know what what are your thoughts you know maybe again you know what are your thoughts in terms of the providers right and maybe this is for sabri and mr ganesh right what do you believe are the cloud providers or cloud service providers the oems do they understand the regulatory space mr ganesh did mention that it's not that everything is always compliant from day one there are times when you know, when there's a journey there's a road map ahead on terms of how they're going to be compliant with it right but what's your views in terms of you know the industry the you know the cloud service providers in the space right now uh, the oems in the space and what, how much are they compliant or how much are they working to ensure that the products are always compliant with the regulatory requirements sabri you want to take it first and maybe mr gaish after that sure very much so right yeah. so uh, i think uh, you know if you take you know, global providers they've been in this space for quite some time and uh, you know all have very focused organizations and departments within their organizations to cater to things like this you know you have grco governance system compliance officers we have csos data protection officers you know across and they uh, and also government liaison officers from a legal perspective they continuously liaise with uh, in the law making bodies to understand what is going on in that landscape and also because you know the, there is quite a lot of cross border data transmission going on between different uh, locations as well because you know backup would be taken in a different country to where the actual original data originated etc so because of which you know these organizations have invested heavily to ensure you know they are pci ds is compliant iso compliant the soc 2 soc 7 compliant there are 27001 compliance hipaa compliance you know you name them you know every industry pretty much has some kind of a compliance or the other to be able to protect uh, the interest of its organizations within that space right so now you can pretty much see every cloud provider is absolutely ensuring that they are compliant with each of this to give that peace of mind to that industry sector that their data is secure and also uh, the next is now you can see cloud providers are specifically creating government cloud specifically you know or you know military related and and, and related to specifics also right so they are embarking on very specific additional controls to ensure that the data is protected so i'm i'm very uh, sure that uh, our going to cloud providers have done or doing their bit very vigorously to ensure the data customers is very well protected that is great uh terence say you know maybe i'll come to you you know at last in terms of trying to summarize as you know as one of the cloud service providers but with ganesh you know your thoughts in terms of readiness of uh, and you have you have shared some of your feedback already but uh, you know in case you want to add little further to that no i think if you ask me to a large extent i would say if you are going to deal with some of the really large ones two three four of them i think uh, I would largely agree with what Shabri was mentioning. 
that pretty much clued on to the regulatory landscape that is uh, there in India and what the Indian regulator require across various sectors, and particularly industries like ours being kind of uh, quite at the forefront in terms of regulation. But the primary responsibility for let's say complying with your own regulator lies with you as the as the customer or as the organization because that uh, no regulator is going to kind of uh, leave you off the hook uh, with, because. Your broker will provide that did, did do something or did not do something. So let us be very clear. As practitioners, I would say that the buck stops with you and with your organization. And uh, you know, we have always seen quite often, uh, and a lot of their offerings as far as cloud service providers are concerned, we have to also appreciate that we are not catering to some, let's say, to find companies in India, they are catering to something like let's say find a thousand companies across the globe. So a lot of the offerings are standard. So it is it is on us to understand what are those offerings and how do they fit in with our own both our own regulatory scape as well as our own uh, application landscape. So there is a lot of work that is involved, which is heavy. Quite often, the bigger worry to me is less of cloud providers, but more of we a bit heavily underestimate the work that is involved on our side. Even to understand something that is supposed to be standard, because it's a big menu card, so you have to understand what you are ordering. So you cannot, uh, you cannot blame the hotel to say that no, no, you gave me this because the menu menu card is fairly detailed. And in the case of cloud service providers, I can tell you that uh, the kind of what you call knowledge base and the kind of detail that they put out on various parts of their services is extremely detailed. Meaning we can't really what you call find fault with that. So it is for us to read the menu card, understand exactly what we are ordering, and then making sure that uh, it is not just ordering, but we also buy them and cook it properly. So I, I would say that I would take the onus heavily on we as practitioners, as opposed to just uh, trying to kind of put it on the cloud service providers. I think so. You put it so beautifully, well, right? Uh, the buck. I think I love that statement. Buck stops with me. I think that's how regulators look at it. A data owner is finally responsible for data security. And I think that will be the fundamental ever. And I completely agree here that, uh, you know, I think the largest challenge is when people start believing because I have a, a service provider, I have an OEM, or let's say I have a large cloud service provider. Security <laughs> is their business. It cannot be their business. It has to be something that you own up. And I think rightly said, there is a lot of standardization which is in place. Uh, I think it's about taking advantages and benefits of that. Because if you try and do a lot of custom changes, it just complicates and makes the environment more complex because cloud isn't as simple as it looks to be, right? Uh, there's a lot of efforts that go into it. Uh, so com I think those are really, and I know that on, all this only comes with deep experience. And when you, you know, when you're really dirty to your hands, right? it doesn't come with uh, books, I know for sure. So thanks for sharing the perspective. There is one interesting thing as a cloud service provider. And I think uh, Sabri mentioned that, right? There are government clouds, right, today, which are designed, you know, to help governments, right? Do you think there are similar clouds or there are opportunities where you could create something for, let's say, a banking world or a financial world, right? Or something which is a hybrid where you can put uh, some of the leading solution play OEMs together and make it a plug and play for the companies? Is that something that can be contemplated? Is that something that has been thought about it or is it just a wild idea and which will never materialize? Right. No, so uh, I, I will just, and I'll answer that question, but also take a step back and say like, uh, from a cloud service provider perspective, Microsoft follows uh, four principles, uh, you know, absolutely uh, to the core, uh, security, compliance, privacy, and data residency, right? Because these are the four pillars uh, that enable businesses to, uh, meet their own obligations, uh, whether it is security or compliance or auditory requirements. So as a service provider, you know, we always strive to make sure that these four pillars are given. And, and when you talk about privacy, like for example, data mining, uh, you know, data access, I mean, your data is your data. I mean, and indeed that whole principle, and, and this is something our, uh, you know, our, our CEO and chairman, right? Uh, Mr. Satya Nadella also practices these, we call this the cloud principles. So that's like, you know, it's a, it's an executive and every, you know, at every level, that's the, the philosophy and principles we work, strive for. Second, again, you know, if the, my, this is my own personal analogy. Uh, you know, we are, uh, you know, like a bank when you're working at the bank, you, you know, it's a, it's a trust relationship. 
uh, if there is trust, you will of course bank and and prosper. If there is no trust, then you would probably not. Similarly with us, it's a, like you know, if we are not able to earn your trust, you of course will never feel comfortable and you know keeping your so-called money or or your applications and data in the cloud. So from my own personal analogy perspective, we are you know we are here to make sure that we're trustworthy, uh, you know, and it's all about digital trust, and that can only be possible when we make sure that we give you a platform which is secure, compliant, privacy, you know, uh, privacy by design and and those core principles that really make you comfortable get there. So I think that's where, you know, uh, as a service provider, we are continuously striving and 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 investing and making sure that uh, we make our customers absolutely comfortable uh, with the Microsoft cloud, right? That's that. And then to your point in terms of industry cloud, uh, you know, I, I cannot directly comment at this point in time right now, where, you know, what's the future or the roadmap looking like. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting uh, topic for discussion. Uh, you know, definitely uh, something we should contemplate, debate and, and, and discuss about in the near future. I just leave it there. Great. I know we are in the top of the hour and, uh, you know, Vivek is already there. So I think uh, if I had to really quickly summarize this, right? Uh, I think at the onset, you know, uh, really thankful to Ganeshar, Sabri sir, and Terence. Uh, I think great insights, right? And as I said, uh, it kind of shows, you know, that uh, we have people who have really worked hard. You know, we have people who have worked on the field, right? And that comes into the play, right? Uh, and we understand that uh, there are a lot of myths about cloud, right? Be it, uh, the picking up the right service model is SaaS a model, is you know, infra as a model, is PaaS a model, right? It starts from there goes on to you know, defining what could be a multi-cloud strategy, goes on to the visibility. We spoke about uh, how hygiene is going to be important, right? We did talk about you know, visibility, and which is where shadow IT goes into play. Because with cloud, you could all, it's very easy to create a new VM. And we said, uh, if you keep on creating new VMs, and if they're not standardized, they're not configured securely, they're always going to you know, increase your threat vector, or threat landscape. So those are very important things. And I think we had very practical insights for people who want to embark on the journey for moving their core applications onto the cloud. And I think uh, this, I have really uh, enjoyed, I have learned a lot today during the session. And I'm just hopeful that you know, everybody who joined us for the session uh, you know, had enjoyed the interactions and the discussion uh, that we had in the last 45 minutes. Vivek, over to you. I know we don't have time for questions and answers, but if you feel free yeah. can take a couple of them, uh, I'd be more than happy. Yeah, or, I think one or two questions are there, but I think in the interest of time, we can take it offline. Uh, yeah. Do me a favor, do us all a favor, uh, just make sure that you send us the questions yeah, and as a group. And with the mail ID, we will make sure that we return back, we revert back to that. Sure, sure, sure. I think I, I would like to thank all of you for the exciting and amazing discussions on the cloud. Definitely audience uh, have got the insights and uh, some of the key points about you know defining KPIs and then uh, making security team involved from the beginning. I think those are really uh, crucial points that audience have got. Uh, I would like to thank all of you and Kalpesh for moderating this session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks. It was a privilege, for you know, kind of moderating the session. Thank you all uh, and have a good day. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks.